This is episode number 153 of the Guns Magazine podcast. Hi there, and welcome to the Guns Magazine podcast, one of the shooting world's biggest gun talk programs. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting folks who make up the world of shooting, hunting, law enforcement, and the firearms industry. But first, I'd like to welcome a couple of new sponsors. The presenting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is the R7 Mako by Kimber. The R7 Mako is a high-capacity polymer frame striker-fired microcompact from Kimber. Here's just a taste of what you get. 12 and 14 round total capacity with the flush and extended magazines, while the performance carry trigger has the smooth pull and clean break you'd expect from a high-end single action handgun. The R7 also comes optics ready or you can have it with optics already installed. Kimber's R7 Mako will feed your appetite for something different. See how at r7mako.com. The supporting sponsor of the Guns Magazine podcast is Craft Holsters. Craft Holsters specializes in production of custom leather holsters for semi-autos and revolvers. Their main mission is to provide every responsible gun owner with a truly custom holster experience at a very reasonable price. Check them out at craftholsters.com. Probably one of the most common gun projects is refinishing an old, worn, or scarred stock. Unfortunately, it's pretty easy to see when it's a DIY project because of all the drips, sags, and errors. But fortunately, we talked today with gun and furniture expert Roy Huntington about his tips and tricks for bringing out the beauty in your gun stock or grips. Now here's Roy Huntington on stock refinishing. Good morning again, Roy. Uh, Good morning, sir. Seems like we just did this. I was going to say we've recorded several here, uh, a stretch, but we've come up with, I think, some interesting topics and had some good episodes. So, you know, you're the expert at many, many things, but this one really is in your wheelhouse because you're both a woodworker and fine furniture builder and a gun guy and a gunsmith. And we're going to talk about making gun stocks or refinishing gun stocks, actually. Making a gun stock is a whole different thing, but... I have committed many crimes against humanity trying to refinish my own gun stocks. And we're going to talk to somebody that actually knows what they're doing and the right way to do it instead of grabbing the uh, can of poly and and hitting it. And it works. But uh, as you get older, you you tend to appreciate things like no sagging drip marks or or things like that. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I said, I've committed all those mistakes and all those crimes. And aside from learning that uh, you have to take your time and do this right instead of try to do it in 15 minutes, truly, in all the gun stocks you've worked on and refinished over the years, what do you think is probably the number one mistake that people bring to you and you go, oh, my Lord. <laughs> we, I laughed at the spray polyurethane because in the day, you know, that was the, the go-to even today. If you look at the Browning, fancy Browning shotguns and stuff, there's that super high gloss, you know, poly finish. Yeah. It is plastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and some people like that. I don't particularly like it, you know, but some people like that. And, uh, I would say the number one thing I see would be a lack of preparation Mm -hmm. or over sanding over sanding. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, because what happens is all the edges that used to be sharp ah. and that used to match the you know metal fit yeah. no longer do. Because come to think of it, I've been guilty of that one too. Well, we all have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all have. <laughs> so uh, under preparation, you're saying that hitting at a few licks with 120 grit sandpaper is not good enough. <laughs> and that's actually that's actually really true. Uh, you know, people think 220 grit paper is like really fine sandpaper. Uh-huh. And oh no, not that's, so much. That's toward the ending of the course grades to me. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I actually, my final pre finished sanding, and some people will argue with me and say that it's not necessary, uh, is, is at least 600 and usually 800. Yeah. 
Uh, and then you raise the grain again and, you know, but that's a mechanical thing. So we can talk about that. Uh, let's take this in whatever direction you'd like to go. Well, let's start with, I've got this old gun of mine or one that I just bought and it's, uh, got some kind of professional finish on it that looks like hell and it's been dropped and gouged and, and I want to refinish it and make the gun look nicer. So in the old days, I would grab my sandpaper and probably stop at 220, and then I would hit it with some kind of, you know, finish. Uh, I don't know that anybody uses varnish anymore, but, you know, that was still something back in the day. But, no. Uh, Wait, let me repeat this. Ready? No, no. do not use varnish. <laughs> okay, we're done. Yeah. Even, the, you know, back in the probably, what, 20s through 50s, that was that was pretty much it on the uh, least expensive guns is they would hit it with some spray varnish and, and there you go. But, well, no. they didn't have polyurethane. Exactly. You know? Yeah. What gun is this that you're refinishing? Oh, let's just call it an old, one of my very first guns I've still got, and I can't think of the the model number it was an old ithaca bolt action 16 gauge with the screw on oh, choke chokes there we go is yeah. there any checkering on it at all no no not even Just pressed in check not even Good. pressed in and it had the uh, old red uh recoil pad that of course was all mashed yeah. on one end from the gun leaning in the sh or the closet yeah. so, does it have one of those twist chokes on the end uh, yeah. i'm blanking oh, yeah. on their name well true true i forget what they're called yeah this was the one that actually had uh, cones that screwed on the barrel Oh, so yeah, you had all yeah. the different different cones. It's it's an ungainly and ugly thing, but I've taken everything from deer to quail to pheasant with it. So it's what still gauge is it? It's sixteen. I was in, I have one in my closet yeah. that I shot when I was ten years old <laughs> and wore the bruise on my yeah. cheek to school yep. the next day and had pride. the uh, <laughs> safety or has the safety that it's uh, lever uh, right below the. Uh, I guess you'd call it a cocking indicator that went left to right. And uh, so, yeah, I've got many fond memories. And it's funny on mine, the metal is still in very good shape, but the, the wood had had something to be desired. So I uh, was going to tackle that. But OK, you're, I come over to your house, to your beautiful wood shop, just like I did recently. You helped me make a incredible uh, cutting board for my lovely wife who just fell in love with it. And Good. the the wood preparation, uh, I, you know, I've, I've done woodworking before, but you, you took it to a whole new level. So I bring this gun to your shop. We take the metal out of it and walk me through what you would have me do. Sure. Um, I, is it a spray on finish on that gun or is it more of a oil kind it's of a finish, a spray on finish it's a spray on finish yeah. okay uh and and you're right take the metal out first uh that's important and take the stock bolt all the way out don't mm -hmm. just leave it dangling there you know <laughs> and then take the recoil pad off yeah but and the, you want to be plastic careful. trigger guard too that's and not the plastic survive trigger sanding. guard right yeah plastic trigger guard and then what you want to do is don't touch the sandpaper Ah. because sandpaper is not your friend when it comes to these kind of things, unless you really sort of understand what you're doing. The thing to do is if you're sanding on a gun stock, you almost should never use your hand like the ah. sandpaper on your hand Yeah, because look, well, your fingers are bumpy and soft and they give. And so as your hand goes across the surface of the gun, if it hits any edges, it's going to round them over you know, uh, if there's huh. any indentions as you sand, it's just going to keep making those indentions deeper. You're never going to get things leveled out. So you need to use a, uh, I use just a little wooden sanding block and then you can shape wooden sanding blocks or even hard styrofoam if you want to shape things to a certain way. So create some shapes so you can use those to sand your stock. So when you're sanding on the butt, the side of the butt where it's got, you know, nicks and dings and stuff like that. Well, you, you sand with the flat uh, behind the sandpaper and that will level all of those out. Uh, there's some other things which we'll talk about in a few minutes about using steam to raise some of these dents. Uh -huh. But the first thing you want to do is go to your local wood supply store uh, or jump online through the miracle of the internet and buy yourself some cabinet scrapers. Okay. So, the picture cabinet scraper is a really thin, you know, like 16 gauge or something, piece of steel, good quality steel. And when they come with you, 
the the edges of them have are, are slightly curled over. You know how when you sharpen a knife and you sharpen it on one side, yeah, then you get that curl on yeah. the other side, right? Well, that's what a scraper is. And if you don't want to spend the money on a scraper, go get a piece of glass, buy some cheap, you know, frame and, and just break it in two or three pieces. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cause what you've got now is this like really sharp edge, mm-hmm. right? And what you're going to do is you're going to use that as a scraper Ah, and you're going to scrape over your gun, being careful not to round over the corners and stuff. And then, and be careful that also you're, you'll watch the grain. And if you feel it kind of grabby and you, you know, maybe you're even pulling up a little bit of the wood, you're going against the grain. So flip the stock around, go back in the other direction. Ah, okay. So what you want to do is you want to scrape off that old finish. Uh, and even in the old days when, when they had petroleum products, <laughs> you could get uh, finish removers that actually worked. Nowadays, not so much, you know? Ah. Uh, yeah. The, and, and I found that usually you just end up with this huge mess and, uh, and it doesn't accomplish much and you yeah. get frustrated. And then, you know, so first step is scrape the old finish off your gun. And okay. even if you don't have a spray on finish, if you've got some kind of an oil finish, go ahead and scrape it because what that's going to do is going to, it's going to get all the crud off all the palm sweat, yeah. you know, the dirt that's ground into the stock. Uh, and it's going to give you basically a, a blank slate that you can then work on. Mm. So uh, I use cabinet scrapers for oddly enough, scraping cabinets, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, it, a lot of times after you use a scraper, you actually are pretty much done. I okay. mean, it's, you're just almost ready to go. Now, what about the checkering? Checkering? It's like, I, that's the rub. You uh-huh. know, if you have checkering, there's really no way around it. You're going to have to get one of the paint strippers mm-hmm. that are out there. Uh, and then the secret here is people get in a hurry. They put it on. And that I think it says, wait 10 minutes. No, <laughs> you know, wait a half an hour. Yeah. And then you want a very, like a call, think stiff toothbrush. So you don't want to use a metal, like a bronze brush. Cause you're going to wear the wood, yeah. but a stiff toothbrush or something. And then you brush all the goobers out. Right. <laughs> and some of it will be lifted off and you wipe it off and then you reapply that stuff. And then you wait a half an hour or so, and then you take it off. And so that it might take you six, eight, 10 times. Uh, but the secret to that is you're not eroding the checkering very much. You know, I mean, if this is a $10,000 custom rifle, you put it down. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if this is your $200 Remington 870 with Prussian factory checkering on the grip or something, then go for it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so now that's going to get you, you know, about where you need to be. Now, if the stock has some really deep gouges and whatnot, if it's, they're really deep, you're, you pretty much are going to live with those. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it's really up to you and depending on where they are, uh, if it's in the sides of the stock or the, along the forehand, you might be able to do that sanding process that we said, where you use a a sanding block and, and you don't, you don't want to sand just in that spot (laughs) because you're going to make a, you know, a divot. So, Long stroke, sand it down, uh, you know, start at maybe 150 if they're really heavy, uh, and then go up to maybe 320 or 400 and kind of see where you are. Now, if you've got uh, a, some dents and some of these scratches, there's a really cool trick. Uh, and I, I use it in woodworking sometimes where you've got a really nice piece of hardwood and you want to use it as a countertop or something, but it's got a dent in it, you know, or somebody dropped a tool on it or mm-hmm. something. So you don't want to sand it out cause that's going to change it, the dimensions. So what you do is you get a, a wet piece of cloth, like terry cloth, uh, pretty soppy wet and you heat up an iron and you put the wet uh, cloth on the dent and then hold the toe of the iron on there. And what you're doing is you're making steam. Yeah. So you've got a steam bender, a miniature steam bender, and mm. you just do it like that and get it in your face and fog up your glasses. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you pull it off and then let it dry. 
And then you will see that you have raised the dent, you know? Wow. And so you may have to do that two or three or four times. It doesn't matter. Try yeah. 10 times if it's not coming out. And, uh, but maybe you have to have the finish off before you can do that. So, uh, so do that. Then you can sand again. Remember, always have your black, your, your block, you know, behind your sanding paper. And then you should be pretty much there, you know, with most stocks like you have, you sand a three twenty four hundred. Uh, and then what I like to do is when you is do a ch ch spritz with water, mm -hmm. you know, over the stock and let that dry and that'll raise the grain. Uh, you'll get little hairs like all over it. Cause right. you, you'll go, Oh man, I have a beautiful piece of wood. It's shiny and it's smooth and it feels <laughs> really good. And then you do that and then it'll get uh, terrible again. And yeah. you'll say that jerk Huntington just messed up my, <laughs> you know, perfect stock, but yeah. no sand it again with the finest, you know, grade you have at this point, you could even use four aught steel wool. Mm -hmm. uh, and say, and now you have, you could even raise those whiskers once, once or twice more. Yeah. Doesn't hurt anything. So you're, you're basically getting rid of all the wood fibers that are at the surface there. And uh, so, okay. So now you're ready now is the time uh and you have to decide what kind of a finish do you want so do you have a sense of what you want like do you want shiny do you want matte do you want probably shiny on this one shiny that would that would mirror the factory because this i'm i'm not trying to restore it but i want it to look closer to how it was setting in the hardware store or whoever first bought it bought it oh sure well you know really you could cheat <laughs> and Always what cheat, always win. Always cheat, always win. Uh, th th I'm trying to remember the name of the product. They're in yellow cans. They have them at Home Depot and Lowe's and that kind of stuff. And it's basically wood restore. Mm -hmm. It's wood restore. And they come in s different colors. Like this is for blonde wood. This is for wow. cherry wood. This is for walnut and stuff. And it's a bit of a solvent uh, with a, maybe some kind of a oil base and or a synthetic, you know, additive. I can't remember what it is, but let's say you have a piece of dull oak furniture, you get mm -hmm. the oak colored and you wipe it on and let it dry and polish it out. And it's sort of, I, I guess I would call it, it like etches the surface a little bit, but it, it creates a new finish on the top. Really? It's not a paint on finish, yeah. but it sort of blends with the old finish and it does remarkably well. I mean, I've, I, I, when I repair a gun for somebody, you know, like a friend or something, if they've got kind of a beater rifle or something like that, a lot of times I'll hit the stock with this stuff before I give it back to them. Mm -hmm. And they always go, Holy crap. What'd you refinish the stock? Uh -huh. You know, but you didn't, you just did this. And so yeah. I would maybe try that first, uh, just find one in the store that is close to the color of your wood yeah. and, and just wipe it on and see what happens. You know, if it's a spray on finish, I don't know that it will have a lot of effect. I'm not sure, but it's worth a try. Uh, but otherwise um, you have two ways you can go. One of them is a wipe on polyurethane. Uh, and then the other one is sort of old school hand rub finish. Ah. So which one do you feel like you want to try? The quick and easy method. <laughs> quick, Brent, quick and easy wheat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, this guy's worth, uh, in, in, in today's inflated market, it's worth 150 maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, while you're at Home Depot, uh, buy a little can of wipe on Midwax, Minwax, oh, M-I-N-W-A-X, okay. yeah. polyurethane. Uh, and then you can get gloss matte you know, uh, interestingly enough, gloss is, has no additives. If you want matte, they put an additive in really to give you the matte finish. Huh. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't understand that. And as a matter of fact, if you buy a, a can of matte min wax and don't shake it, and just use it from the top, it'll be gloss. You will have gloss. Wow. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> huh. Uh, so get this min wax. And then what you do, it's really simple at this point is you basically just get a clean piece of terry cloth and you just wipe it on the stock. And it's very forgiving because there's no runs or anything because yeah. you wipe it and hmm. you just wipe it on kind of like dry it off. Uh, let it set. They tell you two, three, four hours. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, I like to do uh, like a 400 real light 400 sand mm -hmm. and then put another coat on and you might be there. Wow. You know, at that point. Yeah.
So, so no rattle cans. No, I just you insulted my sensibilities. <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem with the rattle cans is if you do that, is you're going to get sags and runs, and so you're going to have to sand them out. The wipe on polys are so easy that, and you know, any dare I say, even a magazine editor. Wow, that's couldn't do it. Yeah. Or scraping bottom of the barrel there, but yeah. So just wipe it on and then you'll see two, I would do two, three coats maybe, yeah. right. Uh, sand in between. You're not sanding down to get to, you know, you're just hitting it like that. Now the final finish, when it dries, you want to let it dry for a few days because it's going to take that time to set up really hard and you're not going to be happy with it because it's, if you run your hands on it, mm-hmm. you, you think you're going to feel a little bit of roughness. Uh, which you will. Yeah. Uh, there's some micro bubbles and dust and stuff like that. So now you can make a decision. Do you want a beautiful satin finish that looks like a hand rubs, you know, like oil stock? Yeah. Or do you want to try to keep it as gloss as possible? So which do you want, Brent? Let's go gloss. You really are trashy. (laughs) (laughs) Is it? Can you make it shinier for me, please? You know, (laughs) yeah. no, I know what you mean, but that would be authentic, you know? So, okay. So now you've got this finish. You've got about three or four coats on and it's dried. It's good and hard. Now, now arm yourself with a piece of, uh, uh, like paper bag, you know, brown paper bag Uh paper. Yeah. I don't even know if you can find paper bags anymore. <laughs> I saw lunch bags in the store the other day. We're like in a 50 pack. Like when yeah. we were kids, you'd send to school with a lunch bag. So you can't, Oh, you, st- you can still get it. Uh, but I, I use a, a little piece of uh, that kind of Brown heavy paper. Yeah. And then w- po- basically polish your stock with that. Really? Uh, yeah. Because it's just abrasive enough that it, it takes out those dust, you know, bits and any little bumps and things like that. Wow. And you will be surprised at what you end up with. It's like, holy cow, did I do this? Really? And then if you really want to get fancy is while you're at Home Depot, buy a can of Johnson floor wax. Mm -hmm. That's like $6 or something. You know, they're yellow round and people literally use them to wax their wood floors. You get down your hands and knees, you wax them. And then like what the karate kid wax on, wax off. Right. (laughs) You know, so, so when you're all done with your rifle, uh, go ahead and wax the stock Ah. and let it dry and then polish it off. And I promise you, you will be amazed. Hmm. And people will look at that and say, you didn't do this. You know, <laughs> you sent this off. You know? Wow. Uh, and while you're doing it, wax the metal parts too. Okay. It's true because uh, I do that with my hunting guns, uh, even the pistols, because then that way, if you're caught in the rain or the mist or something like that, it just beads up like son of a gun, right? On, really? If you have a blue gun, just wax it. We're with car wax or anything. Yeah. It works I'm really good. i to try that. But now you have to decide what to do with the butt stock or with the butt on it. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, because the, all of the ones you buy are oversized. Right. So you either have to fit it before you do the refinish, meaning, you know, get a new one that you like, a fix it and then work it down to where it matches the wood. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and then from that point, do your stock finishing, but the old school gunsmiths, they could put a new uh, soft recoil pad on a brand new browning with a polyurethane finish. And you would never see the fact that they did, Hmm. Uh, but you know, they use sanders and they would get right up on that original finish. So close. Wow. I don't trust myself to do something like that. I I definitely not. No. So I like to fit it. So in your sense, jump on brown L's or someplace, get yourself a recoil pad that looks like it's going to be bigger than yours. Uh, and then you screw that on your gun and then you work that down and you can use a, a disc sander or you can do it by hand. It's a little messy yeah. if you try to do it by hand, just cause that rubbery, you know, stuff tends to want to gum up. Uh, another really easy way to do is you jump on numerous arms or uh, Jack first gun parts company or, or, or even on uh, eBay, and you probably will be able to find a, a, a butt plate for that. That's not a pad. Ah, 
because that's really all you need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then if that's the case, those are easy to fit. Uh, cause you can just, you know, you can, there it is on your gun. You see how much you have to file off, yeah. take it off the gun, file a little bit, try it back on, you know, you basically try fit. And that's what I recommend most people do because fitting a recoil pad is actually, it's, it's a real talent. You need to take the time. Well, it's funny as you were sitting there talking about all that, I, I was laughing because I thought of all the old shotguns I've shot, most of those recoil pads are are so hard. <laughs> there's really yes. no benefit to them. You know, I after know. a couple of years, they just they go off and they're they're as hard as can be, and they're not serving any real function. Other than it, you may find the the reach, yeah, the know, length, the length of, pull. of pull, it'll be a little different. But most of those old guns are way too long anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know. That's Either that funny. or I was just a little kid, you know, and it seemed like it was too big. Yep. <laughs> well, that's a lot of great advice and some stuff I didn't know. So uh, one thing we didn't hit, if you want a matte finish, which, you know, <laughs> it's would, easy. I'll probably, that'll be what I'll actually do. But, you know, I've, I'm a sucker for that gloss. But no, how, how would we do the matte finish? Well, if, if, if one has class... <laughs> And they would wow. like to have a proper hand rub satin finish. Uh -huh. <laughs> you basically take the gloss finish <laughs> that Brent likes and uh, get you some four aught steel wool. Uh -huh. So four zero 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 is the finest kind, yeah. right? And uh, that Johnson wax that you had, and then just go over your gloss finish with that. Uh, really? so you'll be, you'll be rubbing out that finish. Okay. Uh, you don't want to do it with just the steel wool cause that's too abrasive. Okay. Uh, but so rub it out with the wax and not only does it make it absolutely smooth as a baby bottom, but, uh, it gives it this soft luster, you know, I mean, it's just huh. a real pretty finish. That's basically my go-to final finish. If I build a piece of furniture or yeah. something is a wipe on polyurethane and then a four odd steel wool with Johnson wax hand rub finish. Cause it, and it hides mistakes, you know, if there's a little glitch here or there's a scratch here. So, uh, there's some, there's a, one other product though, and it's called Birchwood Casey true oil. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's old school. It's a lot like min wax, except it's actually an oil-based product, you know, linseed and, yeah. you know, I don't know other magic ingredients. And, uh, you apply it very similar, but it gives you a different kind of a finish. It's a, if you've ever seen an old Winchester rifle with a slightly reddish kind of a yeah. stock and they had this soft satin, beautiful finish, yeah. uh, that's what you would use a true oil for. So a sanding preparation, everything is exactly the same, except your final finishes are true oil. And so you put, you rub the true oil on, let it set up. I four out steel wool it, another coat of true oil, four out steel wool it, maybe four or five of those. Uh, you can still get kind of a gloss finish if you want to, but if you, if you do the hand rub four out steel wool and wax as the final, you just, it, there's a, there's a different luster that I have trouble describing, hmm. but it's a richer look, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's worth the time. It really is. And that works for handgun stocks too. So if you have a smooth ah. handgun grip, you know, like a single action or yeah. a set of 1911 grips or something, a true oil or this Minwax finish works for that too. So there Very you go. Cool. Great information, great ideas. And you may have convinced me. I, I won't go the trashy high gloss, even though on this guy, I was I think trying to earth. shame you in I public know. like that. I yeah. know. No, great information. And, uh, I appreciate you sharing that with us and send us a picture editor at gunsmagazine.com. Or if you're listening on YouTube, put it down in the comments, send a link. I'd like to see your gun refinishing projects. And so would Roy. I'll send them along. He'll critique them and we'll all be embarrassed together. So <laughs> actually this gives me, you know, it's a motivation. I think it, it may be a, a, a video in the shop on a, on a basic stock refinish. Yeah. I, I think that would be a great thing. And you know, I think yeah. people would be very interested in it. So yeah, well, thanks we'll for taking that. the time and uh, I'll send you this stock and you can refinish it and show me the, the right way to do it. Actually, you know what, Brent, I would do that if I you want to send would. me that stock, <laughs> you know, all right, buddy. Thank you. Roy had some great tips on stock refinishing, and I hope you're ready to tackle that project you've been putting off. 
If you enjoyed this episode, you can also check out episode number 141, So You Want to Be a Gunsmith, with Roy Huntington. You can also listen to our very popular episode number 149, POS Guns. And, of course, there's last week's episode number 152, which talks about how to salvage your guns if they get submerged. If there's a topic you want to hear, somebody you'd like us to interview, or you want to share your thoughts, please drop me a line at editor at gunsmagazine.com. As always, you can find us on your favorite podcast directory, YouTube, and at gunsmagazine.com. And, of course, while you're online, don't forget to check out our great sister publications, American Handgunner Magazine at AmericanHandgunner.com, AmericanCop.com, and our numerous special editions available for sale on our websites and at Amazon. And don't forget to check out our new presenting sponsor, the R7 Mako by Kimber. Learn more at r7mako.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire staff at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Get shooting.